All right. So we are live. Um, what I've got here are the, uh, this is the uh, St. Augustine's Book of Confessions, but, or book one of his work entitled Confessions of which uh, I've been assigned um, eight for this reading or maybe 13, eight, I think. So um, this is going to take a little bit longer than one uh, sit down and read, but I figured I'd give a, at least a good shot at finishing the first book, um, if not the first two. So um, yeah, let's give it a go. So I'm going to go ahead and read the little summaries that it, it's given me here. Uh, book one, it says, Confessions of the Greatness and Unsearchableness of God, of God's mercies in infancy and boyhood, and human willfulness of his own sins of idleness, abuse of his studies, and of God's gifts up to his 15th year. All right, so uh, it's going to be talking about his confessions up to his 15th year, I suppose. Um, okay, uh, object, uh, the object of these confessions, further ills of idleness developed in his 16th year, evils of ill society, which betrayed him into theft. So that's book one and book two, um, potentially I'm going to get through, but if you get nothing else, I suppose it's just an explanation of those things. All right, book one. Confessions of the greatness and unsearchable, uh, unsearchableness of God, of God's mercies in infancy and boyhood and human willfulness, of his own sins of idleness, abuse of his studies, and of God's gifts up to his 15th year. It's kind of nice that it's got the um, little summary at the top of it each time. All right, here we go. Great art thou, O Lord, and greatly to be praised. Great is thy power and thy wisdom infinite. And thee would man praise man, uh, man, but a particle of thy creation, man that bears about him his mortality, the witness of his sin, the witness that thou resistest the proud, yet would man praise thee, he but a particle of thy creation. Thou awakest us to delight in thy praise, for thou madest us for thyself, and our heart is restless until it, it, it repose in thee. Grant, grant me, Lord, to know and understand which is first, to call on thee or to praise thee, and again to know thee or to call on thee. For who can call on thee not knowing thee? For he that knoweth thee may not call on thee as, as other than thou art. Or is it rather that we call on thee uh, that we may know thee? But how shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? Or how shall they believe without a preacher? And they that seek the Lord shall praise him, for they that seek shall find him, and they that shall praise uh, they that find shall praise him i will seek thee lord by calling on thee and will call on thee believing in thee for to us ha to us hast thou been preached my faith lord shall call on thee which thou hast given me wherewith thou hast inspired me through the incarnation of thy son through the ministry of the preacher this is going to be a little bit more of a tongue twister than i realized all right and how shall I call upon my God, my God and Lord, uh, since when I call for him, I shall be calling him to myself? And what room is there within me, whether my Lord can come into me? Whether can God come into me, God, who, uh, God who made heaven and her, earth? Is there indeed, O Lord my God, aught in me that can complain, uh, that, that can contain thee? Do heaven and earth, which thou hast made, and wherein thou hast made me, contain thee? Or, because nothing which exists could exist without thee, doth therefore whatever exists contain thee? Since then I too exist, why do I seek that thou shouldest enter into me who were not, wert thou not in me? Why? Because I am not gone down in hell, and yet thou art there also. For if I go down into hell, thou art there. I could not be then, O oh my God, could not be well, uh, be at all well, wert, wert thou not in me, or rather, unless I were in thee, of whom are all things, by whom are all things, and whom are all things. Even so, Lord, even so. Whither do I call thee, since I am in thee, or when, whence canst thou enter into me? For whither I can go beyond heaven and earth, that thence my God should come into me, who hath said, I fill the heaven and the earth. Do the heaven and earth th then contain thee, since thou fillest them? Or dost thou fill them, and yet overflow, since they do not contain thee? And whither, when the heaven and earth are filled, pourest thou forth the remainder of thyself? 
or hast thou no need that aught contain thee? Uh, who containest all things, since thou fillest, thou fillest by containing it. For the vessels which thou fillest uphold thee not, since though they were broken, thou wert not poured out. And when thou art poured out on us, thou art not cast down, that thou upliftest us. us. Thou art not dis dissipated, but thou gatherest us. But thou who fillest all things, fillest thou them with thy whole self. Or since all things cannot contain thee wholly, do they contain part of thee? Or uh, and all at once the same part, or each of its own, or each its own part, the greater more, the smaller less, and is then one part of the greater, another less, or art thou holy everywhere, while nothing contains thee holy? What art thou then, my God? What but the Lord God? For who is the Lord but the Lord? Or who is God save our God? Most highest, most good, most potent, most omnipotent, most merciful, yet most just. Most hidden, yet most present. Most beautiful, yet most strong. Stable, yet incomprehensible. Unchangeable, yet all changing. Never saw, never old. All renewing and bringing age upon the proud. And they know it not. Ever working, ever at rest. Still gathering, yet nothing lacking. Supporting, filling, and overspreading. Creating, nourishing, and maturing. Seeking, yet having all things. Thou lovest without passion. Art, je uh, art jealous, without anxiety. Repentest, yet grievest not. Art angry, yet serene, changest thy works, thy purpose and change, receivest again what thou findest, yet didst never lose, never in need, yet rejoicing in gains, never covetous, yet exacting usury. Thou receivest over and above that thou mayest owe, and who hath aught that is not thine. thine. Thou payest debts, owing nothing, remittest debts, losing nothing, and what have I now said, my God, my life, by holy joy? Or what saith any man when he speaks of thee? Yet woe to him that speaketh not, since mute are even the most eloquent. Oh, that I might repose on thee. Oh, that, that thou wouldest enter into my heart and inebriate it, that I may forget my ills and embrace thee, my soul good. What art thou, uh, what art thou to me? And thy pity teach me to utter it. Or what, I am, uh, what am I to thee that thou demandest my love, and if I give it not, are wroth with me, and threatenest me with grievous woes. Is it then a slight woe to love thee not? Oh, for thy mercy's sake, tell me, O Lord my God, what thou art unto me. Say unto my soul, I am thy salvation. So speak that I may hear. Behold, Lord, that my, my heart is uh, before thee. Open thou the ears thereof, and say, and say unto my soul, I am thy salvation. After this voice, let me haste and take, uh, take hold on thee. Hide not thy face from me, let me die. Lest I die, only let me see thy face. Narrow is the mansion of my soul, enlarge thou it, that thou mayest enter in. It is ruinous, repair thou it. It has that within which must offend thine eyes, I confess and know it. But who shall cleanse it? Or to whom should I cry, save thee? Lord, cleanse me from my secret faults, and spare thy servant from the power of the enemy. I believe, and therefore do I speak. Lord, thou knowest... Have I not confessed against myself my transgressions unto thee, and thou, my God, hast forgiven the iniquity of my heart? I contend not in judgment with thee, who art the truth. I fear to deceive myself, lest mine iniquity lie uh, unto itself. Therefore I contend not in judgment with thee, for if thou, Lord, shouldest, uh, shouldest mark iniquities, O Lord, who shall abide it? Yet suffer me to speak unto thy mercy, me, uh, dust and ashes." Yet suffer me to speak, since I speak to thy mercy, and not to scornful man. Thou too, perhaps, despisest me, uh, yet wilt thou return and have compassion upon me. For what would I say, O Lord my God, but that I know not whence I come into this, uh, this dying life, shall I call it, or living death? Then immediately did the comforts of thy compassion take me up, as I heard, for I remember it not from the parents of my flesh, out of whose substance thou didst sometime fashion me. Thus they receive... Uh, received me the comforts of woman's milk. For neither my mother nor my nurses stored their own breasts for me, but thou didst bestow the food of my infancy through them, according to thine ordinance, whereby thou distributest thy riches through the hidden springs of all things. Thou also gavest me to desire no more than thou gavest, and to my nurses willingly to give me what thou gavest them. For they, with an with an heaven-taught affection, willingly gave me what they uh, what they abounded with from thee. 
For this, my good from them was good for them. My good from them was good for them. Nor indeed from them was it, but through them. For from thee, O God, are all good things, and from my God is all my health. This I since learned thou, uh, thou through these, these thy gifts, within me and without, proclaiming thyself unto me. For then I knew but to suck, to repose in what I pleased, and cry at what offended my flesh, nothing more. Afterwards I began to smile, uh, first in sleep, then waking, for so it was told, told me of myself, and I believed it, for we see the like in other infants, though of myself I remember it not. Thus, little by little, I became conscious where I was, and, have, uh, and to have a wish to express my wishes to those who could not contend them. And I could not, for the wishes were within me, and they without, nor could they, by any sense of theirs, enter within my spirit." So I flung about at random limbs and, vo uh, limbs and voice, making the few signs I could, and such as I could, like, through, and uh, though in truth very little like, what I wished. And when I was not presently obeyed, my wishes being hurtful or un unintelligible, then I was indignant with my elders for not submitting to me, with these owing me no service for not serving me, and avenged myself on them by tears. Such have I learnt infants to be from observing them. And that I was myself such, they all unconscious have shown me better than my nurses who knew it. And lo, my infancy died long since, and I live. But thou, Lord, who forever livest, and in whom nothing dies, for before the foundation of the world, and before all that can be called before, thou art, and art God, and Lord of all which thou hast created, and thee abide, fixed forever, the first causes of all things unabiding, and of all things changeable." Uh, the springs abide in thee unchangeable, and in thee live the internal, eternal reasons of all things unreasoning and temporal. Say, Lord, to me, thy, thy suppliant, say, all pitying to me, thy pitiable one, say, did my infancy succeed another age of mine that died before it? Was it that which I spent within my mother's, my mother's womb? For of that I have heard somewhat, and I have myself seen woman with child. And what before that life again, O God, my joy, was I anywhere or anybody? For this have, uh, for this have I none to tell me, neither father nor mother, nor experience of others, nor mine own memory. Dost thou mock me for asking this, and bid me praise thee and acknowledge thee for what for that I do know? Uh, for that I do know. I acknowledge thee, Lord of heaven and earth, and praise thee for my first rudiments of being and my infancy, whereof I remember nothing. For thou hast appointed that man should from others guess much as to himself and believe much on the strength of weak females. Even then I had, uh, even then I had being in life and at my infancy's close, I could see, uh, I could seek for signs were about to make known to others, my sensations. Whence could such a being be save from thee, Lord shall any of his, of his own uh, artificer, I'm not sure quite what that word means in that context, or can there elsewhere be derived any vein which may stream essence and life into us, save from thee, O Lord, in whom essence and life are one. For thou thyself are, art supremely essence and life. For thou art most high and art not changed. Neither in thee doth today come to a close, yet in thee doth it come to a close, because all such things are also are in thee. For they had no way to pass away, unless thou upheldest them. And since thy years fail not, thy years are one today, how many of ours and our father's years have flowed away th through thy today and from it received the measure, the mold, uh, the measure and the mold of such being as they had and still others shall flow away and so rece receive the mold of their degree of being. But thou art still the same in all things of tomorrow and all things before and beyond and all of yesterday and all behind it thou hast done today. What is it to me though it, uh, though any comprehend not this. Let him also rejoice and say, what thing is this? Let him rejoice even thus and be content rather that rather by not discovering to discover thee than by discovering not to discover thee. Hear, O God, alas for man's sin. So saith man, and thou pitiest him, for thou madest him, but sin in him thou madest not. Who remindeth, uh, who remindeth me of the sin of my infancy? For in thy sight none is pure from sin, not even the infant, whose life is but a day upon this earth. Who remindeth me? Doth not each little infant in whom I see what of myself I remember not? What then was my sin? Was it that I hung open the bre uh, that I hung upon the breast and cried? For should I now so do for suitable at, uh, for food suitable to my age? 
justly should I be laughed at and reproved? What I, what I then did was worthy reproof, but since I could not understand reproof, custom and reason forbade me to be reproved. For those habits, when grown, we root out and cast away. Now no man, though he prunes, wittingly casts away what is good. For what it, for what it then good, for was it then good, even for a while, to cry f- to cry for what, if given, would hurt. Bitterly to resent that person's free and its own elders, yea, the very authors of its birth, served it not. That many besides wiser than it obeyed not the knot of its good pleasure. To do its best to strike and hurt because commands were not obeyed, which had been obeyed to its hurt. The weakness then of infant limbs, not to its will, is its innocence. Myself have seen and known even a baby envious. It uh, it could not speak, yet it turned pale and looked bitterly on its foster brother. Who knows not this? Mothers and nurses tell you that they allay these things by I know not what remedies. It is that uh, is that too it. Is that too, in a sense, when the fountain of milk is flowing in rich abundance, not to endure one to share it, though in ex- extremist need, and whose very life and as yet depends thereon? We bear gently with all this, not as being no or slight evils, but because they will disappear as years increase. For, though tolerated now, the very same tempers are utter- utterly intolerable when found in riper years. Tough to read for me. Thou then, O Lord my God, who gavest life to this my infancy, furnishing thus with senses as we see the frame thou gavest. uh, Who gave us... uh, Let me make sure. Uh, Thou then, O Lord my God, who gavest life to this my infancy, furnishing thus with senses, as we see, the frame thou gavest, compacting its limbs, ornamenting its proportions, and for its general good and safety, implanting in it all vital functions. Thou commandest me to praise thee in all the, in these things, to confess unto thee and sing unto thee uh, unto thy name, thou most highest. For God, art, uh, for thou art God Almighty and good. Even hadst thou d- done not, but only this, which none could do but thou whose unity is the mold of all things, who out of thy own fairness makest all things fair and orderest all things by by thy law. This age then, Lord, whereof I have no remembrance, which I take on others' word and guess from other infants that I might have passed, that I have passed. True though the guess be, I am yet loth to count in this life of mine which I live in this world. For no less than that which I spend in my mother's womb Is it hid from me in the shadows of forgetfulness? But if I was shapen in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me, where I beseech thee, O my God, where Lord or or when was I thy servant guiltless? But lo, that period I passed by and what I have, uh, and what have I now to do with that of which I can recall no vestige? Passing hence from infancy, I came to boyhood, or rather it came to me displacing infancy nor did that depart for for whither it went, and yet it was no more. For I was no longer a speechless infant, but a speaking boy. This I remember, and have since observed how I learned to speak. It was not that my elders taught me words, as soon after other learning in any set method, but I, longing by cries and broken accents and various motions of my limbs to express my thoughts, that so I might have my will, and yet unable to express all I willed or to whom I willed, did myself, by the understanding which thou, my God, gavest me, practice the sounds of my memory. When they named anything, and as they spoke, turned towards it, I saw and remembered that they called what they would point out by name they uttered, and they and that they meant this thing and no other was plain from the motion of their body. The natural language, as it were, of all nations, expressed by the countenance, Glances of the eye, gestures of the limbs, and tones of the voice, indicating the affections of the mind as it pursues, possesses, rejects, or shuns. And thus, by constantly hearing words as they occurred in various sentences, I collected gradually for what they stood, and having broken in my mouth to all these signs, I thereby gave utterance to my will. Thus, I exchanged with those about me these current signs of our wills, and so launched a deeper Uh, deeper into the stormy intercourse of human life, yet depending on parental authority and the beck of elders. O God, my God, what miseries and mockeries did I now experience when obedience to my teachers was proposed for me as proper in a boy in order that 
that in this world I might prosper and excel in tongue science, which should serve to the praise of men and to deceitful riches. Next, I was but to school to get learning, in which I, poor wretch, knew not what use there was, and yet, if idle in learning, I was beaten. For this was, uh, for this was judged right by our forefathers, and many, passing the same course before us, framed for us uh, wary paths through which we were faith to pass, uh, fain to pass, multiplying toil and grief upon the sons of Adam. But, Lord, we found that men called upon thee, and we learnt from them to think of thee, according to our powers, as, as of some great one who, though hidden from our senses, couldst hear and help us. For so I began as a boy to pray to thee, my aid and refuge, and broke the fetters of my tongue to call on thee, praying thee, Though small, yet with no small earnestness, that I might be beaten at school, might not be beaten at school. And while thou hurtest me not, and thereby giving me over to folly, my elders, yea, my very parents, who yet wished me no ill, mocked my stripes, my, my then great and grievous ill. Is there, Lord, any of soul so great, and cleaving to thee with so intense, effect, uh, so intense affection for a sort of stupidity will in a way do it? But is there anyone who, from cleaving devoutly to thee, is endued with so great a spirit that he can think as lightly of the racks and hooks and other torments against which throughout all lands men call on thee with extreme dread, mocking at those by whom they are feared most bitterly as our parents mocked the torments which we suffered in boyhood from our masters. For we feared not our torments less, nor prayed we less to, de to thee to escape them, and yet we sinned in writing or reading or studying less than, we ex than was exacted of us. For we wanted not, O Lord, memory or capacity, whereof thy will was given, uh, what thy will gave enough for our age, but our sole delight was play. And for this we were punished by those who yet themselves were doing the like. But elder folks' idleness, idleness is called business, that of boys being really the same is punished by those elders, and none commiserates either boys or men. For will any of sound discretion approve of my being beaten as a boy because by playing at ball, I made less progress in studies, which I was to learn only that, as a man, I might play more un unbeseemingly. And what else did he who beat me? Who, if worsted in some trifling discussion with his fellow tutor, was more embittered and jealous than I, when bit beaten at ball by a playfellow. And yet I send herein, O, o Lord God, the creator and disp disposer of all things in nature, of sin the disposer only, O Lord my God, I send in transgression the commands of my parents and those my masters for what they with whatever motive would have would have me learn i might afterward have but to get you to good use for i disobeyed not from a better choice but from love of play loving the pride of victory in my contest and to have my ears tickled with lying fables that they may they might itch the more the same curiosity flashing from my eyes more and more for the shows and games of my elders. Yet those who give these shows are in such esteem that they almost all wish the same for their children and yet are very willing that they should be beaten if those very games detain them from the studies whereby they would have them attain to be given to, to be the givers of them. Look with pity, Lord, on these things and deliver us who call upon thee now. Uh, deliver those too who call not on thee yet that they may call on thee, and thou mayest deliver them. As a boy, then, I had already heard of an eternal life, promised us through the humility of the Lord our God, stooping to our pride, and even from the womb of my mother, who greatly hoped that hoped in thee, I was sealed with, with the mark of his cross and salted with his salt. Thou sawest, Lord, how yet how while yet a boy, being seized on a time with sudden oppression of the stomach, and like near to death, Thou sawest my God, for thou wert my keeper, with what eagerness and what faith I sought from the pious care of my mother and thy church, the mother of us all, the baptism of thy Christ, my God and Lord, whereupon the mother of my flesh, being much troubled, since with a heart pure in thy faith, she even more lovingly tra uh, travailed in birth of my salvation. What an, anger, uh, what an eager haste have provided for my consecration and cleansing by the health-giving sacraments, confessing thee, Lord Jesus, for the remission of sins, unless I had suddenly recovered. And so, as if I must needs be again polluted, should I live, my cleansing was deferred because the defilements of sin would, after that, after that washing, bring greater and more perilous guilt. 
I then already believed in my mother and the whole house household, except for my father yet did not did, did not he prevail over the power of my mother's piety in me that as he did not yet believe. So neither would I, should I, for it was her earnest care that thou, my God, it was her, her earnest care that thou, my God, rather than he shouldest be my father. And in this, thou didst aid her to prevail her over uh, to prevail over her husband whom she the better obeyed therein also obeying thee who hast so commanded i beseech thee my god i would fain know if thou willest for what purpose my baptism was then deferred was it for my good that the rain was laid loose as it were upon me for me to sin or was it not laid loose if not why does it still echo in our ears on all sides let him alone let him do as he will for he is not yet baptized but as to boldly health, uh, as to bodily health, no one says, "Let him be worse wounded, for he is not yet healed." How much better then had I been at once healed, and then by my friend's diligence and my own, my soul's recovered health had been kept safe in Thy keeping, who gavest it? Better truly. But how many and great waves of temptation seemed to hang over me after my boyhood? These my mother foresaw and preferred to expose to them the. Uh, to them the clay whence I might afterwards be molded than the wary cast when made, than the very cast when made. And boyhood itself, however, so much less dreaded for me than youth, I loved not study and hated to be forced to it. Yet I was forced, and this was well done towards me. But I did not, I did not well, for unless forced, I had not learnt. But no, no one doth well against his will, even though what he doth be, even though what he doth be well. Yet neither did they well who forced me, but what was well came to me from thee, my God. My God. For they, uh, for they were, regardless how I should employ what they forced me to learn, except to satiate the insatiate desires of a wealthy beggary and a shameful glory. But thou, who, by, but thou by whom the very hairs of our head are, are numbered, didst use for my good the error of all who urged me to learn and my own who would not learn. Thou didst use for my punishment, a fit penalty for one so small a boy and so great a sinner. So by those who did not well, thou didst well for me, and by my own sin thou didst justly punish me. For thou hast commanded, and so it is, that every inordinate affection should be its own punishment. But... Why did I so much hate the Greek when I studied it as a boy? I do not yet fully know, for the Latin I loved, not what my first masters, but what the so-called grammarians taught me. For those first lessons, reading, writing, and arithmetic, I thought as great a burden and penalty as any Greek. And yet whence, this, whence was this too, but from the sin and vanity of this life, because I was flesh and a breath that passeth away and cometh not again. For those first lessons were better, certainly, because more certain, by them I obtain and still retain the power of reading what I, for, what I find written, and myself writing what I will, whereas in the others I was forced to, to learn the wanderings of one Aeneas, forgetful of my own, and to weep for the dead Dido, because she killed herself for love, the while with dry eyes I endured my miserable life, uh, my miserable self, dying among these things, far from thee, O God, my life." For what, what more miserable than a miserable being who commiserates not himself, weeping the death of Ditto for, the, for love to Aeneas, but weeping not his own death for want of love to thee, O God? Thou light of my heart, thou bread of my inmost soul, thou power who givest figure to my mind, who quickenest my thoughts, I love thee not. I committed for fornication against thee, and all around me thus fornicating there echoed, Well done, well done! For the friendship of this world is fornication against thee. And well done, well done, echoes on till one is ashamed not to be thus a man. Oh, in all this I wept not, I who wept for ditto slain, and seeking by the sword a stroke and wound extreme, and myself seeking the lowest of thy creatures, having forsaken thee, earth passing into the earth, and it forbid to read all this. I was grieved that I might not read what grieved me. Madness like this uh, is thought a higher and richer learning than that by which I learned in, to read and write. But now, my God, cry thou aloud in my soul, and let thy truth tell me. Not so, not so, far better was that first study. 
For lo, I would readily forget the wanderings of Aeneas and all the rest, rather than how to read and write. But over the entrance of the grammar school is a veil drawn, true, yet is this not so much an emblem of aught recondite as a cloak of error? Let not those whom I, no, whom I no longer fear cry out against me while I confess to thee, my God, whatever my soul will, and acquiesce in the condemnation of my evil ways that I may love thy good ways. Let not either buyers or sellers of grammar learning cry out against me. For if I question them whether it be true that Aeneas came on a time to Carthage, as the poet tells, the less learned, uh, the less learned will reply that they know not, the more learned that he never did. But should I ask what letters the name Aeneas has written, everyone who has learnt this will answer me aright, as to the signs which men have conveniently settled. If, again, I should ask which might be forgotten with least detriment to the concerns of life, reading and writing, or those these poetic fictions, who does not foresee what all must answer who have not wholly forget, forgotten themselves? I sent then when I was a boy preferred those empty when as a boy I preferred those empty to empty to those more profitable studies or rather loved the one and hated the other one and one two two and two four this was to me a hateful sing song the wooden horse lined with armed men and the burning of Troy and Cruza's shade and sad similitude were the choice spectacle of my vanity why then did I hate the Greek classics which I have the like which I have the like tales for Homer so curiously wove the like fictions and is most sweetly vain, yet was he bitter to my boyish taste. And so I suppose would Virgil be to Grecian children when forced to learn him as I was Homer. Difficulty in truth, the difficulty of a foreign tongue dashed as it were with, uh, with gall all the sweetness of Grecian fable. For not one word of it did I understand, and to make me understand I was urged vehemently with cruel threats and punishments. Time was also as an infant, I knew no uh, time was also, I knew no Latin. But this I learned without fear of suffering by mere observation amid the caresses of my nursery and jests of friends, smiling and sportively encouraging me. This I learned without any pressure of punishment to urge uh, to urge me on, for my heart urged me to give birth to its conceptions, which I could only do by learning words, not of those who taught, but of those who talked with me in whose ears I gave birth to the thoughts, whatever I conceived. No doubt, then, that a free curiosity uh, has more force in our learning these things than a frightful enforcement. Only this enforcement restrains the rovings of that freedom uh, through thy laws, O oh my God. Thy laws from the masters came to the martyrs' trials, being able to temper for us a wholesome bitter, recalling us to thyself from that de deadly pleasures, uh, pleasure which lures us from thee. Hear, Lord, my prayer, let not my soul faint under thy discipline, nor let me faint in confessing unto thee all thy mercies, whereby thou hast drawn me, me out of my most evil ways, that thou mightest become a delight to me above all the allurements which I once pursued, that I may most entirely love thee, and clasp thy hands with all my affections, and thou mayest yet rescue me from every temptation, even unto the end. For lo, O Lord, my King and my God, for thy service be whatever useful thing my childhood learned, for thy service that I speak, write, read, reckon, for thou didst grant me thy discipline, while I was learning vanities, and my sin of delighting in these vanities thou hast forgiven." In them, indeed, I learnt many a useful word, but these may as well be learned in things not vain, and that is the safe path for the steps of youth. But woe is thee, thou torrent of human custom, who shall stand against thee? Who, how long shalt thou not be dried up? How long roll the sons of Eve into that huge and hideous ocean, which even they scarcely overpass to climb the cross? Did not I read in thee of Jove, the thunderer and the adulterer? Both, doubtless, he could uh, he could not be, but so faint thunder might countenance and pander to real adultery. And now, which of our uh, gowned masters lends a sober ear to one whom from their own school cries out? Hmm. These were Homer's fictions, transferring uh, things human to the gods. What he had brought down things divine to us. Yet more truthfully had he said, 
These are indeed his fictions, but attributing a divine nature to wicked men that crimes might be no longer crimes, and whoso commits them might seem to, in, uh, to imitate not abandoned men, but the celestial gods. And yet thou hellish torrent, uh, torrent into thee are cast the sons of men with rich rewards for compassing such learning and a great solemnity is made of it when this is going on in the forum within sight of laws appointing a salary beside the scholar's payments and thou lashest thy rocks and roarest hence words are learnt hence eloquence most necessary to gain your ends or maintain opinions as if we should have never known such words as golden shower lap beguile uh, temples of the heavens or others in that passage unless Terence had brought a lewd youth upon the stage, setting up Jupiter as his example of seduction. Here's a quote. Viewing a picture where the tale was drawn of Jove's descending in a golden shower to Danae's lap, a woman to beguile. Uh, end quote. And then mark how he excites himself to lust as by celestial authority. Begin quote. Who shakes heaven's... Oh, and what God, great Jove, who shakes heaven's highest temples with his thunder, and I, poor mortal man, not do the same? I did it, and with all the heart I did it. End quote. Not one whit more easily are the words learnt for all his vileness, but by their means the vileness is committed with less shame. Not that I blame the words, being, as it were, choice and precious vessels, but that wine of error, which is a precious, uh, but that wine of error, which is uh, drunk to us in them by intoxicated, intoxicated teachers. And if we too drink not, we are beaten and have no sober judge to whom we may appeal. Yet, oh my God, in whose presence I now without hurt may remember this. All this, unhap uh, all this unhappily I learnt willingly with great delight, and for this was pronounced a hope hopeful boy. Bear with me, my God, while I say somewhat of my wit, thy gift and on what dostages I wasted it. For a task was set upon, uh, was set me troublesome enough to my soul, upon terms of praise or shame and fears of of stripes, to speak the words of Juno as she raged and mourned that she could not quote this Trojan prince from uh, Latium turn end quote. Which words I have I had heard that Juno never uttered, but we were forced to go astray in the footsteps of these poetic fictions, and to say in prose much what he ex expressed in verse. And his speaking was most applauded in whom the passions of rage and grief were, were most preeminent and clothed in the most fitting language, maintaining the dignity of the character. What is it to me, O oh, my true life, my God, that my de uh, declamation was applauded above so many of my own age and class? Is not all this smoke and wind? And was there nothing else whereon to exercise my wit and tongue? Thy praises, Lord, thy praises may might have stayed the yet tender shoot of my heart by the prop of thy scriptures, so had it not trailed away amid these empty trifles, a defiled prey for the fowls of the air. For in more ways than one do men sacrifice to the rebellious angels. But what marvel that I was thus carried away into vanity, uh, to vanities and went out from thy presence, O oh my God, when men were set before me as models, who, if in relating some action of theirs, in itself not ill, they committed some barbarism or solecism, being censured, were abashed. But when in rich and adorned and self-ordered discourse, they related their own disordered life, being praised, they're gloried. So we're calling out hypocrisies of being abashed in confession and being uh, and bragging about it in real life. These things thou seest, Lord, and beholdest thy, thy peace, long-suffering and plenteous in mercy and truth. Wilt thou hold thy peace forever? And even now th thou drawest out of this horrible gulf the soul that seeketh thee, that thirsteth for thy pleasures, whose heart saith unto thee, I have sought thy face. Thy face, Lord, will I seek, for darkened affections is removal from thee, for it is not by our feet or change of place that men leave thee or return unto thee. Or did thy younger son look out for horses or chariots or ships, fly with visible wings or journey by the motion of his limbs, that he might in a far country waste in righteous living all thou gavest at his departure? 
a loving father when thou gavest, and more loving unto him when he turned empty. So then in lustful, that is, in darkened affections, is the true distance from thy face. Behold, O Lord God, yea, behold, patiently as thou art wont, or art, art wont, not wont, uh, how carefully the sons of men observe the uh, covenanted rules of letters and syllables received from those who spake before them, neglecting the eternal covenant of everlasting salvation received from thee, insomuch that a teacher or learner of the hereditary laws of pronunciation will more offend men by speaking without the aspirate of a human being, and despite of the laws of grammar, than if he, a human being, hate a human being in despite of thine. As if any enemy could more hurtful than the hatred with which he is incensed against him, or could wound, uh, could wound more deeply him who persecutes than he wounds his own soul by his in enmity. Assuredly, no science of letters can be so innate as the record of conscience that he is doing to another what from another he would be loth to suffer. How deep are thy ways, O God, thou, thou only great, that sittest silent on high, and by an unwearied law dispensing penal blindness to lawless desires. In quest of the fame of eloquence, a man standing before a human judge, surrounded by a human throng, declaiming against his enemy with fiercest hatred, will take heed most watchfully lest by an, uh, watch, most watchfully lest by an error of the tongue he murder the word human being, but takes no heed lest through the fury of his spirit he murder the real human being. This was the world at whose gate unhappily I lay in my boyhood, this the stage where I had feared more to commit a barbarism than, having committed one, to envy those who had not. These things I speak and confess to thee, my God, for which I had praise, uh, which I had praise from them, whom I then thought all virtue to please. For I saw not the abyss of vileness wherein I was cast away from thine eyes. Before them what more foul than I was already, displeasing even such as myself with innumerable lies, deceiving my tutor, my masters, my, my parents from love of play, eagerness to see vain shows, and restlessness to imitate them. Thefts also I committed from my parents' cellar and table, uh, enslaved by greediness, or that I might have to give to boy, or that I might have to give to boys who sold me their play, which all the while they liked no less than I. In this play, too, I often sought unfair conquests conquered myself, meanwhile, by vain desire of preeminence, and what, I, what could I so, uh, so ill endure, or when I de detected it, upbraided I so fiercely as, as that I was doing to others, and for which, if detected, I was so, I was upbraided, um, I chose rather to quarrel than to yield, and is this the innocence of boyhood? Not so, Lord, not so. I cry thy mercy, O oh my God. For these very sins, as riper years succeed, these very sins are transferred from tutors and masters, from nuts and balls and sparrows, to magistrates and kings, to golden manners and slaves, just as, as severer punishments displaced the cane. It was the low stature then of childhood, which thou, our king, didst commend as an em emblem of lowliness when thou saidst, of, of such is the kingdom of heaven. Yet, Lord, to thee, the creator and governor of the universe, most excellent and most good, thanks were due to thee, our God, even hadst thou uh, destined for me boyhood only. For even then I was, I lived and felt, and had an implanted providence over my own well-being. A trace of that mysterious unity whence I, I was derived, I guarded by the inward sense the entireness of my senses, and in these minute pur uh, pursuits, and in my thoughts on things minute, I learnt to delight in truth. I hated to be deceived, had a vigorous memory, was gifted with speech, was soothed by friendships, uh, by friendship, avoided pain, baseness, ignorance. Uh, next, and so small, a, uh, and so small a creature. What was not wonderful, not admirable, but all are gifts of my God. It was not I who gave them me, and good these are, and these together are myself. Good then is he that made me, and he is my good, and before him I will exult for every good which of a boy I had. For it, it was my sin that not in him, but in his creatures, uh, myself and others, I sought for pleasures, sublimities, 
truths and so fell headlong into sorrows, uh, into sorrows, confusions, errors. Thanks to be to thee, my joy and my glory and my confidence, my God, thanks to be to thee for thy gifts, but do thou preserve them to me, for so wilt, uh, for so wilt thou pres uh, preserve me, and those things shall be enlarged and perfected, which thou hast given me, and I myself shall be with thee, since even to uh, to be thou, since even to be thou hast given me. Goodness. All right. So I gave myself to thee. I think is is what it, what Augustine is saying there at the end. All right. Old English. That's uh, like King James. King James Bible English. Mm, if I'm understanding correctly, Augustine is. Well, that's what the whole beginning summary is helpful for. It's like, okay, what's going on in this whole first book? And then we get some different examples. Oh, we get some just musings. He's just thinking to himself, it seems like in writing. And it's, and it's good. It's poetic in certain places. But oh my goodness, that was hard to read. Especially as someone who doesn't connect with the material. Like, I don't, I don't know that a God exists. So I don't connect with, especially Catholicism or early Catholicism, it's like very, it's like not only over my head, but it's just like from a foundational point, I don't get it. And then he's also mentioning people like me, people who don't believe and kind of draws contrasts with. Uh, but yeah, so that's book one. Enjoy. I, uh, I hope you enjoyed